Chaque jour, il est en lien à te smiler, si tu es un amour distant, snap it en lien à tout le monde. Soyons plus partis dans ma vie, on ne sera plus Sirupam sagrajatam sagna rognatam vitam tam sadhivam Sadvaitam savadutam parijana saitam krishna chaitanya devam Sirada krishna padam sagna larita sirisakam vitam scha He krishna karuna sinno dina bando jagat pate Gopesa gopika kanta Radha Kanta Nostate Tapta Kanta Nagorangi Radha Vindavane Svare Visabhana Sutta Devi Pranamani Hari Pri Vanchakta Patruvita Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patitanam Pavanevi Vaisnaveri Onamana Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dvaita Gradha Sri Vasati Gaura Bhaktivani Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The verse that uh, comes to mind is a verse from the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita that uh, describes the ocean. I don't know if it's due to the weather that I'm thinking of uh, of this verse, but somehow or other, it's coming to my mind. Tatvat kamaya pravisanti sarde sarsanti apnuti na kamakami. It is described that just like there are many rivers flowing into the ocean. Že popisuje sa, že presne tak, ako existuje toľko riek, ktoré tečú do oceánu. So, in the same way, there are many desires that are flowing into the consciousness. And um, all these desires um, that are coming into our consciousness, they, uh, they push us in different directions. Všetky tieto túžby, ktoré prichádzajú do nášho vedomia, oni nás tlačia rôznymi smermi. And, um, but it said the ocean is so full that all those rivers that are just uh, entering into it, they have no effect at all. Ale hovorí sa, že oceán je tak plný, že aj keď všetky tieto rieky do ňoho pritekajú, pritekajú vôbec ho nejako neovplyvňa. So when the heart is empty, then one is very much affected by all the things of this world. And that is the situation with most people. They, uh, their hearts are very empty. Uh, sometimes it is described like guyam or like like caves so you can just imagine a heart which is like a dark cave where many bats of sinful desires are flying around it basically is the case that our heart is empty or we are not fulfilled. Sanskrit aphorisms say, Anandamai Bhyasat, 
that the living being is by nature pleasure seeking. Takže v sanskrite sa hovorí Ananda má aj bhyasa, že živá bytosť je svojou povahou, ona hľada stále šťastie. So in that way we are always driven by a search for pleasure. A takto nás neustále ženie túžba hľadať nejakú radosť, uspokojenie. And wherever we think that that pleasure will be found, that is where we will put our energy. A svoju energiu vkladáme tam, kde si myslíme, že túto radosť nájdeme. And when we don't believe in it anymore, no more pleasure, then after a while we quit. A keď už strácame vieru, nie je tu žiadna radosť, tak potom s tým prestávame. Like this, uh, we are trying one thing, then we're trying another. <laughs> so many words and so few. <laughs> uh, yes. So it was the... Um, the French philosopher Pascal, who said that uh, that man basically has a condition of a vacuum in his heart. And that uh, that vacuum cannot be filled by anything. A nič nedokáže vyplniť toto vakuum. Unless it is by a relationship with God. Oh. So, uh, that is true, and that same message is found in the Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, we are speaking about making our life more meaningful. A rozprávame o tom, ako dať svojemu životu väčší zmysel. More meaningful than just surviving. More meaningful than just making money. More meaningful than, uh, than even a relationship between Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Aby bol zmysluplnejší ako len prežitie, zmysluplnejší ako zarábanie peniazy a zmysluplnejší ako vzťah medzi Rómeom a Juliou. <laughs> yeah. uh, because ultimately these things, they, they bring us happiness and distress. Pretože konec koncov tieto veci nám prinašajú šťastie a nešťastie. Uh, when it comes to relationships, I often say that uh, Relationships don't just work, you have to work for it. That is a fact. We, uh, everything in this world has its, uh, its limitations. A tak to je, všetko v tomto svete má svoje obmedzenia. The uh, Vedic scriptures are bringing out the point of duality and how everything in the material world has always an element of duality. Vedské písma nám dávajú do pozornosti bod duality, ako všetko v tomto hmotnom svete má nejakú dualitu. In that same second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is the famous verse Matras Parsas Tukonteya Sitos Nasuka Dukada Agama Pajinanitius Tam Titiksava Bharata. That uh, one should not be disturbed by the circumstances or by the heat of summer, by the cold of winter, uh, but one should, in an equipoised state of mind, simply tolerate such influences. The iste druhej kapitole Bhagavad Gita je popísané, ako by sme nemali byť rozrušení horúčavou leta alebo chladom zimy, ale byť vyrovnaní za všetkých okolností. 
So, uh, yeah, that's uh, interesting. Um, um, the material world has this duality. There is no happiness without some distress in the material world. Tak to je, hmotný svet má vždy takéto duality. Neexistuje šťastie bez toho, že by bolo pritomné nešťastie. That's really the nature of things. It's like I, I just was on a dream island in Croatia. Beautiful place, beautiful ocean, beautiful, 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 like from the movies. Ja som sa práve vrátil z krásneho a chorvátskeho ostrovu, kde všetko bolo nádherné, bol tam krásna pláž, krásne slnko, všetko nádherné ako vo filme. Uh, yeah, but in the movies you don't always uh, see everything, you don't get the full effects. Ano, ale vo filmoch nevidíte všetko, nevidíte ako celý ten široký spektrum toho obrazu. Like from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock it was just too hot. It's just so hot that like uh, everyone's just sitting in the shade waiting for it to cool down. I remember how one time I was uh, in Holland and in Holland it, uh, it can rain somewhere between uh, 250 to 300 days a year. <laughs> and the, the normal Dutch expression is, is like a white face and a red nose with a drop hanging on it. <laughs> Taký klasický obraz Holandiana je biela tvár s veľkým červeným nosom a tak ďal mu steká kvapka. So my face was also like that, I was walking in the street, you know, and suddenly I saw this poster of a beautiful beach, you know, palm tree on it and everything. In, a, in the shop, in, in a window. Uh... A moja tvár vyzerala presne takisto a zrazu ja som zbadal krásny plagát s palmami a s plážou, vyzeralo to nádherne. And before I knew it, I had already bought the ticket. <laughs> A skôr ako som si uvedomil, som si už kúpil listok. I was going to Kenya, where the, on the equator where the sun always shines. Juhu. A išiel som do Kenya, kde slnko neustále svieti. Yeah, well it was great, you know. I came there to Kenya and everywhere. Coconut, coconut, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it was a great place and, yeah, I went to the beach and, uh, well, it seemed quite nice. Except that when I stepped on the beach, it was so hot, the scent was so hot that uh, I couldn't sit on it. Všetko vyzeralo tak krásne, až na jeden malý detail, že keď som šlapil na tú pláž, bola taká horúca, že sa na nej nedalo ani sedieť. So I, I thought to myself, no problem, no problem, I'll just go for a swim, blue ocean blue. <laughs> Spovedal, to nie je žiadny problém, idem si zaplávať, krásny modrý oceán. And then local people came and said, no, 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 you can't, you can't go and swim now, no, 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 it's high, you know, it's high water. Prišli miestni obe, obyvateľi a nie, 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 teraz nemôžeš ísť splávať, tá voda je príliš vysoko. I said, look, you know, I'm from Holland, high water, low water, we're not going to do that. Dobre, ako pozrite sa, ja som z Holandska, či už ako vysoká voda, nízka voda, to pre mňa nie je problém. They said, no, but with the high water, the sharks come over the reef. <laughs> So I go like, sharks, hmm. Okay, well, I'll swim a little later. And uh, I decided to just sit comfortably under the palm trees. After all, that's what palm trees are for, palm trees. 
Tak som si povedal, že nož tak sa teda aspoň posadím po tie palmovníky, ako na to oni sú tie palmové stromy, aby sme pod nimi sedeli. Then as I was sitting under the palm tree, suddenly next to me, plop, plop, wow, a scorpion. Wait until I tell that story back home, how I fought off the scorpion. Ako som si tam senial zrazu, bum, 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 škorpion, no tak to už sa teším na to, ako to porozprávam doma. But then another scorpion, and another scorpion. And I looked up and I realized that the tree was full with scorpions. Ale potom ďalší škorpión a ďalší a ďalší. Pozrel som sa hore a uvedomil som si, že ten strom je plný škorpiónov. So finally I was sitting on the hot beach with my towel over my head. Tak nakoniec som sedel na tej horúcej pláži a na hlavy som mal uterák. And I was thinking about karma. Premyšľal som nad karmou. And I was thinking, it was my, my karma to suffer. <laughs> and I was suffering from the rain. And now I simply moved that karma. But I'm still suffering. Something like in the old days, you know, believe it or not, once, once upon a time, There was a time when suitcases had no wheels. Ako v starých časoch, dávno, pradávno, existovali kufre, ktoré vôbec nemali kolečka. Yeah. I think it's hard to believe, children, but, you know, honestly speaking, once upon a time, there were suitcases that had no wheels, and you wonder what did people do, you know? They used to carry them in their hands, you know? Yeah? Takže kde bolo, tam boli... Kde bolo tam bolo, deti, neviem, či tomu uveríte, ale naozaj, kde bolo tam bolo, existovali také uh, kufre, ktoré vôbec nemali kolečka a čo ľudia museli robiť, museli ich nosiť. And it just carried in the hand until the hand could, until the fingers wouldn't get straight anymore. And then we try the other hand for a while. Some people would carry the suitcase on their shoulder, some would even some Indians would carry it on their head, you know, so many ways of carrying a suitcase. And karma is like that. We may carry it in one hand. And then we work hard to improve the conditions of life, but all that it will lead to is that the car, that the suitcase goes to the other hand. So we work hard to improve the conditions of life, but, if we, but we cannot improve the conditions of our karma. Tvrdo pracujeme, aby sme zlepšili svoje životné podmienky, ale nemôžeme spraviť nič preto, aby sme zlepšili podmienky svojej karmy. If you're destined to enjoy, you will enjoy. If you're destined to suffer, you will suffer, no matter how much work you do. Ak tvoje osudy, aby si si užíval, tak si budeš užívať. A ak tvoje osudy, aby si trpel, tak budeš trpiť bez toho na to, bez ohľadu na to, ako veľmi sa bez snaží to zmeniť. So... Somehow or other, uh, we have this idea that by hard work in this world, that we can really uh, improve the condition of life. Uh, today we have a, a guest here, Gavin, who's uh, connected to a radio station and before um, we had some interview and we were talking also a little. And uh, it was, uh, was a nice conversation and, uh, and we were speaking about uh, the conditions of nature, how people were living with the wealth of nature and then contrasted by the wealth of uh, of technological 
or modern technological development. Bola to dobrá konverzácia. Rozprávali sme o tom, ako niektorí ľudia keď si ako žili vďaka bohatstvu z prírody a teraz a potom sme to porovnávali s tým, ako teraz ľudia žijú a bohatstvo, ktoré produkuje technológia. And, and Gavin was saying that uh, <coughs> studies show that the present number of people uh, uh, are consuming more have a greater need for consumption, especially in America, UK and Western Europe, have a greater need for consumption than one and a half times the planet can supply. No, Gavin, Gavin podotkol, že podľa moderných štúdí, a obzvlášť ľudia v Amerike a v, v, vo Veľkej Británii, ako v západnom svete, majú 1,5 krát väčšiu spotrebu, ako táto planéta vôbec môže dať. But if the people would live a lifestyle like the people in India, then the planet could handle 18 billion people. Ale ak by ľudia žili životným štýlom, ako žijú ľudia v Indii, tak potom by táto planéta dokázala udržať 18 miliárd ľudí. So those, those are just interesting topics. Sú to zaujímavé témy. Um. So it shows that with all our hard work to try and overcome the problems of nature, uh, we simply encounter new problems. Because fundamentally, material existence has this element of duality, happiness and distress že v svojom základe hmotná príroda má tento element duality, šťastie a nešťastie. Uh, and uh, how, how is there a question of fulfillment when there is distress? Ako môžeme rozprávať o nejakom naplnení, keď trpíme? Uh, uh, you know, then you can say, uh, so if there's both happiness and distress, you can say be positive, be positive. Uh, like today we had an interesting discussion and the discussion was that uh, we're looking at a chapati. <laughs> and some might say that a pizza is a self-realized chapati. A niektorí hovoria, že pizza je seberealizované čapaty. Others are saying that the pizza is a fallen samosa. <laughs> Iní zase hovoria, že pizza je upadnutá samosa. Okay, it's a little bit of an insider's joke, but I... Uh, I like it because it is the positive outlook and the negative outlook. Takže ja, možno ako a všetci tomu nerozumiete, čo ty myslím, ale a ja mám rád tento príklad, pretože ukazuje to pozitívny a negatívny náhľad na vec. Or a more simple analogy, if you missed the last one, is about the cup is half full or the cup is half empty. Ešte jednoduchšia analogia, ak ste nepochopili tú predchádzajúcu, tak môžeme hovoriť, že napríklad pohár je na, pl- na polovicu plný alebo na polovicu prázdny. So, you know, which one is true? Is the cup half full or is the cup half empty? Obviously, both are true. Uh, uh, like in, in, in the world literature, you get like uh, very optimistic writings and then or you know like gloom and doom from Russia or something you know Dostoevsky or <laughs> so Ako svetovej literatúre to máte tiež prítomné ako máte nejakú ako krásu pozitívnu literatúru alebo potom takú ako um, pripomínajúcu koniec sveta ako napríklad Dostoevsky For example <laughs> Anyway so my point is is that uh, 
if you if you analyze it objectively, then uh, fulfillment is not possible in the material on the material plane. Moj bod je v tom, že ak sa objektívne na to pozrieme, tak prídeme na to, že uspokojenie, uspokojenie nie je možné na hmotnej úrovni. There's always something to complain about. Vždy sa na niečo sťažujeme. Or the opposite, there's always something, you know, to, to really be optimistic or positive about. Alebo z opačného uhla pohľadu vždycky je niečo ohľadne čo môže byť pozitívny alebo optimistický. And uh, it may be felt that optimistic people are doing better. Takže môže sa zdať, že optimistom sa lepšie darí. The power of positive thinking. Sila pozitívneho myslenia. And as like uh, uh, yeah, there are big books about it. Existuje o tom toľko kníh. The secret. <laughs> so you know, uh, if you think positive, then you attract also the positive. But ultimately, again, objectively speaking, uh, the material world It's not just positive, it's both. Ale z konečného hľadiska, ak sa na to pozrieme objektívne, tak prídeme na to, že hmotný svet nie je len pozitívny, on má obe stránky. Therefore, logically speaking, <coughs> fulfillment is not possible. Logicky povedané, ako naplnenie nie je možné. Because the living being is by nature pleasure seeking že živá bytosť svojou povahou hľadá radosť, potešenie. So once this point sinks in, that is the stage where one says, well, okay, is there more? Keď začneme chápať tento bod, tak vtedy sa začneme pýtať, nož, ak je to tak, je niečo viac? And, and throughout the history of the world, this question has been asked by many people. Is there more than this alone? Celú históriu sa ľudia stále pýtali túto otázku. Existuje viac ako to, čo tu teraz vidíme? So that is called, that stage um, is recognized in the Vedic literature as atata brahmi yikyasa. That that's the stage where one begins to inquire into the absolute truth. A vedská literatúra rozpoznáva tento stav ako stav, kedy sa začneme pýtať na absolútnu pravdu. Um, absolute truth is speaking about an eternal world, an eternal existence, which is which, where there's no duality. Takže vtedy hovoríme o väčšnom svete, o väčšnej existencii, kde neexistuje žiadna dualita. Um, um, there is only happiness and so it is described uh, an ever increasing happiness. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, again, there's, there's a huge body of literature on that topic both in East and West. Samozrejme, k tejto téme existuje obrovské množstvo literatúry, či už na východe, alebo na západe. But yeah, to, to, uh, you know, like many people may say, yeah, but you know, how do you know that all these things are true when you start to speak about eternal worlds and all that, very nice, but what factual information is there? A ľudia sa potom začínajú pýtať, áno, ako, ale ako viete, že je to pravda? Aké máte skutočné dôkazy na to, že to takto je? Uh, Vedic literature is saying that the key to uh, the whole matter is consciousness. Vedická literatúra hovorí, že kľúč k celej tejto záležitosti je vedomie. And it is saying that uh, 
on different levels of consciousness there is a different level of perception. A je povedané, že na rôznych úrovniach vedomia existuje existujú rôzne úrovne vnímania. So there is in the in the Bhagavad Gita a division of of consciousness. Bhagavad Gita je táto vízia vedomia. And it says it's it's Anamoy, Pranamoy, Gyanamoy, Vigyanamoy and Anandamoy. Uh, Anamoy is basically food consciousness, like the animals who always think of eating, children also, food consciousness. Existujú rôzne úrovne ako Anamaya, Pranamaya a tak ďalej. Tato Anamaya znamená, že naše vedomie je neustále pohrúžené do jedenia, ako napríklad zvieratá alebo deti. Oni stále rozmýšľajú len o tom, čo by zjedli. Some people never grow out of that stage. <laughs> a niektorí, a niektorí ľudia nikdy z toho ani nevyrastú. Okay, Then, you know, there is pranamoy. Pranamoy means that uh, we are relating, relating to energies and to other life. A ďalšia úroveň je pranamaya. Pranamaya znamená, že sa vzťahujeme na energie a iné životy. So it's very much, that's the stage where we are very much concerned with relationships. And relationships with others, relationships with the environment, relationships with the place. This pranamaya conscious is all about relationships. Na tejto úrovni Pranamaja sa veľmi uh, zaujímame o vzťahy, o vzťahy s inými ľuďmi, o vzťahy s prírodou, o vzťahy s týmto miestom. Toto je úroveň pra, um, Pranamaja. So, in Pranamaja, some sort of consciousness may develop where we are thinking about how to improve the relationships with people, how to tap into the, uh, the, the cosmic Uh, energies, all these kind of relationships. How to become like better instruments of life-giving energy and how amongst each other like having like a better flow of, uh, of, of exchange že ako rozmýšľame nad tým, ako sa stať lepším inštrumentom týchto energií, ako medzi nami môže byť ako lepšia výmena. Part of this, this stage of consciousness is about living life to its fullest. Časť tohto vedomia je, že chceme žiť svoj život úplne naplno, ako sa dá. I feel the air entering every cell within my lungs and rejuvenating, rejuvenating me with new energy. <laughs> I cook on tea, you know. I've seen that in you know, Chinese movies. Videl som to v uh, movie Charlie? Čínsky. 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 Čínsky filmov. They cook on chi. <laughs> Same scares. <laughs> um, next stage is Gyanamoy. Že, uh, oni varia nači, čo teda šetri ten plyn. A ďalší, ďalšia úroveň je Gyanamaya. Gyanamoy is getting more inquisitive. Gyanamoy is the state of consciousness where we begin to inquire into the nature of being. Whereas in Pranamoy we're playing with energies and harnessing these energies, in Gyanamoy we begin to question what is, what is the nature of being and what is the purpose. 
že na úrovni pranamáji sa hráme s energiami a snažíme sa ich nejako využiť, použiť. Na úrovni, na úrovni gyanamáji sa začíname pýtať, aký je zmysel existencie. In the, in the more advanced stages, well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do it a little different. Um, in, uh, in Germany, Frankfurt is a very uh, well-known place. It is known for uh, one of the biggest airports in Europe. It is known as the financial capital of Germany. A Frankfurt je známy ako, že majú najväčšie letisko v Európe a je hlavným finančným mestom Nemecka. It's less known for being the birthplace of, uh, of, of Goethe. Ale nie je tak známy, že je to uh, miesto narodenia Goetheho. But uh, indeed, uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, or Goethe, I forgot. I think there's a form. There's a form in it. Yeah, von Goethe was uh, appeared there in uh, in Frankfurt. Ale ano, samozrejme, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe sa zjavil vo Frankfurte. So uh, I spent some time in Germany and I was reading a little Goethe and uh, Goethe was explaining. He said that a child, huh, a child. Is a realist. A ja som tam strávil nejaký čas vo Frankfurte a čítal som Goetheho a ten Goethe hovoril, že dieťa, dieťa je realistické. A child is trying to figure out what things are. What is an apple? What is, an, what, is an, what is a pear? A child tries to figure out reality. Dieťa sa snaží zistiť, zistiť je realitu, čo je jablko, čo je pomaranč. When uh, yeah, I remember when I was a child, my father took me to a uh, a cemetery because a relative had died, but I didn't care so much about that relative. Uh, so I was kind of there, more curious, reading the tombstones, and then I read on one of the tombstones that somebody had died who was born after me, and I was five, and that shocked me. Keď som bol malý, raz ma otec zobral na cintorín, pretože nám zomrel nejaký, nejaký príbuzný, ale mňa ten príbuzný moc nezaujímal, tak ja som tam čítal tie náhrobné kamene. A na jednom náhrobnom kameni som zistil, som si prečítal, že niekto tam zomrel skôr, niekto zomrel, kto bol narodený neskôr ako ja, a ja som vtedy mal 5 rokov. Vtedy ma to zarazilo. O môj Bože, ja tiež zomriem. Vtedy som bol realist. But anyway, I survived. And uh, subsequently I became a youth. And I got my first guitar and I sang Freedom! Ale ja som to prežil. No a potom prišla mladosť. Dostal som svoju prvú gitaru a spieval som Sloboda. And I sang about compassion and sympathy for the suffering of people, and I had great ideals. Yes, Goethe says, in youth one becomes an idealist. He said, but in midlife one becomes a, scenic, a cynic. <laughs> Dobre, ale v stredných rokoch života sa z človeka stáva cynik. Yes, eat it all, done it all, know it all, don't tell me anything about it. Všetko yeah. som už videl, zažil, správil, už mi nič o tom nehovorte. Uh, he said, and then comes old age. Potom prichádza staroba. And I guess I'm just getting there. <laughs> Uh, okay. and, and that's where it gets interesting, at least to me. So Goethe says that in old age one, one figures out that life is not logical at all. 
začína byť zaujímavé. Aspoň pre mňa, GT hovorí, že v tej dobe človek zistí, že život vôbec nie je logický. He says like, you know, sometimes you see that there are very intelligent, qualified people and they're not successful. And then there's a buffoon, right? And he gets all the success in life. A vidíte, že, keď hovorí, že vidíte, že niekedy sú a inteligentní, veľmi kvalifikovaní ľudia a vôbec neúspejú a potom je tam ako nejaký úplný a neschopák a ten získa všetok úspech. Goethe says it's... In, in, in old age one realizes it's not going on by logic, it's mystic. <laughs> He's saying success depends on some higher force. <laughs> okay, well that's why I liked it, I guess. Uh, I thought it was interesting to look at people like philosophers at different stages in their life. And uh, it made some sense. So, uh, yes, in Gyanamoy, because I was just explaining Anamoy, food consciousness, Pranamoy, relationships, and Gyanamoy, the more inquisitive, philosophical, or scientific mind. Uh, so, in Gyanamoy, in the mature stages, one comes to these same conclusions as, as Goethe. Right? One begins to see that it's, it's not all going on by laws and logic, and one begins to see or suspect uh, some higher, higher intelligence or higher plan or, or, or design behind it all. Na úrovni Giana Maj a človek príde na túto úroveň ako GT, že vidí, že sú ako rôzne úrovne a že existuje, musí existovať nejaká vyššia inteligencia. And God comes in the picture. A vtedy prichádza Boh na scénu. The next stage of consciousness, according to the Bhagavad Gita, is Vigyana Maj where one is not only accepting the possibility that there might be a higher intelligence behind it all or a god behind it all but where one begins to develop that relationship with god one begins to consciously pursue a spiritual elevation through some process. And finally, the fifth stage is where one lives in, the, in a intimate relationship with the Supreme Lord. At that stage, one becomes a saintly person. Posledná úroveň je úroveň, kedy človek začne mať dôverný vzťah s najvyšší, najvyšším pánom a na tejto úrovni sa s neho stáva sveta osoba. Uh, and it doesn't matter what tradition one belongs to. A vôbec nezáleží na tom, aké tradície patríme. Uh, for example, we can look at a, at a Christian tradition, let's say, let's look at uh, Teresa di Avila. A keď sa pozrieme na kresťanskú tradíciu, môžeme sa pozrieť napríklad na, na Tereziu z Avily. Who, uh, who, ex, who experiences uh, a very deep uh, loving union with God. Ktorá zažíva veľmi hlboké spojenie, láskyplné spojenie s Najvyšším Pánom. And she describes how that love was just overtaking her and how she couldn't move anymore 
and how she just became frozen. Ona popisuje, ako ju tá láska zaplavila a zrazu sa nemohla ani pohnúť a bola úplne zabrznutá. Well, I found that interesting because the same thing you can read in 500-year-old texts in our own tradition about that in the most advanced stages of saintliness when love of God is there that sometimes the love is so overwhelming that the devotee becomes frozen and stands like a statue. Mne sa to zdalo veľmi zaujímavé, pretože to isté sa môžeme, sa môžeme dočítať na našich 500 ročných spísoch, kde je napísané, že keď vo vysokom štádiu oddaný začne byť zaplavený láskou, tak vtedy príde na úroveň, keď je úplne niekedy zamrzne. So I just wanted to point out that, that saintliness is cross-cultural and exists in different traditions. Takže ja som tým chcel ukázať, že toto ako byť svedcom, to existuje v rôznych tradíciách a kultúrach. I'll give you a Muslim saint now. Um, and to, and for the sake of correctness, a female one as well. So uh, this lady, she was known to be a, a great, uh, great saint. And one day, She came out of her house in the morning with two buckets. One bucket with fire and one bucket with water. And people said, oh, oh, what are you going to do with this bucket of water and this bucket of fire? And she said, with this bucket of fire, I'm going to burn heaven. Yes. And with this bucket of water, I'm going to put out the fire of hell. Did you get it all? With this bucket of fire, I'm going to burn heaven. Did you say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yes. So, with the fire gonna burn heaven, with the water put out hell. So people were shocked, you know. I mean, especially the burning heaven part for a saint person, you know. I said, why, why would you want to do that? She said, like most people are just doing all kinds of religious activities because they want to go to heaven. And others are just doing all kinds of spiritual activities because they want to avoid hell. Therefore, I'm going to burn heaven and I'm going to just put out the fire of hell so that everyone will only worship God out of love. A ľudia sa jej začali pýtať, a prečo by si také niečo chcela spraviť? A ona hovorí, pretože toľkí ľudia uctievajú Boha len preto, aby sa dostali do nebies. A iní ľudia zasa sa uctievajú Boha len preto, aby sa vyhli peklu. A preto ja ich takto zničím, aby ľudia uctievali Boha iba z lásky. So, uh, yes, uh, the conclusions of all the saintly persons of all traditions are ultimately the same. Um, that love of God, that is the, the essential quality of saintliness. And that is on top of the pyramid. A to je na vrchu pyramidy. Uh, at the base, animalistic food consciousness. A dolo ako základ je toto a zvieracie vedomie o jedle. Or struggle for survival. Alebo zápas o existenciu. Next level, 
enjoying relationships with people, things, and energy, playing around. Ďalšia úroveň je, keď si vychutnávame vzťahy s ľuďmi, vecami a energiami, proste sa tak hráme. Next level, the inquisitive mind. Question mark. Ďalšia úroveň je tá zvedavá mysl, ktorá má nad hlavou taký veľký otázor. Then with the help of Goethe, one becomes a mystic. S pomocou Gateho sa s nás stane mystik. And one becomes serious about developing that relationship with God. A začneme byť vážne vyvinúť tento vzťah s Bohom. Which culminates in, in love of God. Ktorý kulminuje v lásku k Bohu. And that actually is this Krishna consciousness. A v skutočnosti to je toto Krišna vedomie. So everyone can see where, where he fits, you know, on, 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 in the pyramid of consciousness. Každý z nás sa, sa môže zaradiť, kam do tej pyramídy vedomia patrí. And at the end of the program, many of us may choose for food consciousness. <laughs> na, konci, na konci tohto programu mnohí z nás sa rozhodnú preto a vedomie o jedle. Says enough of this. Uh, the, the inquisitiveness is now fully satisfied. <laughs> no, but you can think about these five levels of consciousness. Um, that are mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita and easily see where we ourselves, where we are at this stage. Týchto piatich úrovne, ktoré sú spomenuté v Bhagavad Gita a sami môžeme vidieť, na ktorú úroveň patríme. So, this is the interesting thing about the Bhagavad Gita. To je tá zaujímavá časť Bhagavad Gita. That it's a, it's a very analytical book that at the same time relates to the practical situation. Takže uh, to, čo je zaujímavé na Bhagavad Gita, že je to, že je to veľmi analytická kniha, ktorá zároveň uh, sa vzťahuje na každodenný život. Well, thank you so much for, for listening all this time. If anyone has a, a little response, then uh, we'll give five minutes for that. So, uh, yeah. Ďakujem vám za vašu pozornosť a teraz, uh, ak niekto má nejakú otázku alebo niečo by chcel komentovať, tak na to vyhradím 5 minút. Okay, we have two. Uh, I have just a short question. The intention to control others is uh, in on which level of consciousness? Že ja mám otázku, tá snaha ovládať druhých, na akej úrovni vedomia to je prítomné? Um. I think that in all the uh, levels there's an element of, uh, of, of control over others. In food consciousness it's about who gets there first. <laughs> And who gets the best? That, and so on. In, um, in, in relationships, uh, obviously there is a... Uh, and in exploiting energies, there, there is, is a lot of the controlling uh, tenants. Vo vzťahoch a v snahe vykorizovať energie je samozrejme veľmi silný prvok ovládania druhých. Um, but the philosopher wants to control the thought process. Ale filozof ten zase chce ovládať proces myšlienok. He wants to impose a particular view upon others, so he's also a controller. 
a chce druhým vtlačiť určitý svoj pohľad na vec a takým spôsobom ich tiež kontroluje. In the fourth level of Vigyana Moy, the one who is actively pursuing a relationship with God, uh, oftentimes becomes a forceful uh, preacher, you know, who goes door to door and puts his foot between the door. Kazateľ, ktorý chodí k odveri, od dverov k dverám a nohu strčiť, aby sme mohli zavrieť tie dvere. There are these cartoons of, of like a Hare Krishna is walking down the street and spots an innocent person. Takže existujú tieto komiksy ako Hare Krishna a ide po ulici a zrazu si všimne nejakú nevinnú osobu. Around the Hare Krishna there is a cloud and in the cloud there are many words Krishna Hare Hare Rama Rama. Okolo toho Hare Krishna aká je taký oblak a je tam veľa slova ako Krishna Hare Hare. Suddenly he pulls that other person into the cloud and you see lots of arms and legs. A z nena zdá ekip tiahne tú druhú osobu do toho oblaku a potom vidíš veľa rúk a nôh. And in the end the Hare Krishna is walking away. And you see, uh, you see this man lying on the ground with a book stuck in his throat. <laughs> so on the, on the fourth level also sometimes we want to control. On the fifth level of love of God, oh yes, one also wants to control. But this time out of compassion. Because, you know, real compassion is only possible if you have something better. Pretože viete, skutočný súcit je možný iba vtedy, ak máte niečo lepšie. So someone who has love of God really has something better. Niekto, kto má lásku k Bohu, má v skutočnosti niečo lepšie. Má naozaj niečo lepšie. Such a person has a better level of happiness. Takáto osoba má šťastie na lepšej úrovni. And therefore wants to share it with others. A preto sa chce o ňu podeliť s ďalšími. So the controlling element is always there. It's a, it's a fundamental aspect in intrinsic aspect in our nature. It's just how are we using it? In an enlightened way or in a um, what's the other word in an oppressive way. Takže tento aspekt kontrolovania je vždycky prítomný. Otázka je len ako ho použijeme, či osvecujúcim spôsobom alebo zatlačujúcim spôsobom. The next question is uh, maybe be on uh, this in this stage of life on one on these uh, levels three or four levels simultaneously and additional question uh, is it automatical that every Hare Krishna as you said an example must be on the fourth uh, level of uh, consciousness Takže otázka je, že či môžeme byť v tomto štádiu života na viacerých úrovniach tohto vedomia naraz. A dodatočná otázka, že či je každý člen hnutia Hare Krishna automaticky na štvrtej úrovni toho vedomia. Yeah, very good question. Um, I think that uh, uh, as these five stages are given, uh, we are gradually going through the stages. And uh, a particular stage is predominant at a particular time. But uh, that uh, 
remnants of previous stages may still be there. Or already some elements of more advanced stages begin to develop. Alebo sa začínajú rozvíjať aj, aj ďalšie elementy z vyšších úrovní. But everyone is, is, has a predominant aspect of one of these, these five. Ale každý má jeden najvýraznejší aspekt z týchto piatich. So you know somebody who comes to, to Hare Krishna does not have so much personal qualification. But he can take a lot of advantage of the uh, of the knowledge and realizations of great saintly personalities. Yeah, and, and that can really give a person uh, uh, can, can pull him up you know, to stages really beyond his own uh, level. So when due to advanced association someone is pulled up to a higher stage then some remnants of the Lower stages may still remain us. So we're not really like um, saying that every higher Krishna is uh, is automatically superior to other people. Nemôže povedať, že za to, že niekto je Hare Krishna, tak automaticky je nadradený všetkým ostatným ľuďom. No, in our personal qualifications, we are sometimes less developed and sometimes, uh, you know, lacking in so many qualities. So, at the end of the day, uh, we are just fortunate because we got knowledge from great saintly personalities. Well, with that, we have used our time, I think, and we brought it to the limit as far as chanting, hearing, I think, uh, the next part of the program is high time. So we thank you all for your patience and uh, listen to me. Yeah, once you start something like five levels, then you have to go through all five. So it took a little longer, <laughs> but I hope it was interesting. Thank you very much and hope to see you again sometime soon. Thank you. Tak to sme ukončili a svoj program a spievania a prednášky a teraz sa príde uctievanie pracada. A takto keď sme prešli všetkých tých 5 úrovní, tak sa to trošku natiahlo, ale ja dúfam, že je to pre vás zaujímavé a teda ďakujem vám za vašu pozornosť a ja dúfam, že sa čoskoro uvidíme.